So if you have your Bible, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11. Today we are going to talk about resting in God. Hebrews 4 verse 11. The topic is receive through rest. Receiving through rest. Hebrews 4 verse 11. It says like this, Let us therefore strive to enter the rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. I'll read that again for you. Let us therefore strive to enter the rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. See, God has, God has rest for all of us. He wants us to rest. Okay, so rest is our portion. Rest is our inheritance. God wants you to be in a place of rest. But what is rest? What does it look like? So when I was, you know, learning about rest, I thought that rest means to just stay idle, do nothing. Or rest means to stay up on bed, you know, be lazy, sleep for 12 hours. That means rest, right? Or rest means just inactivity, not doing anything at all. But we have to understand that rest is not just an event that God is calling us into. See, when Sunday, when we come and we say that today is a day of rest, we're not saying that today is the only day of rest. We're just proclaiming the reality that God has been doing from Monday to Saturday. We're taking a special day aside just to proclaim what God has been doing from Monday to Saturday. Okay, so rest is not an event. Rest has to be a lifestyle in the here and now. You're not going to rest in peace when you die. Get what I'm saying? In Jesus, you can rest in peace at all times. You don't have to die to rest in peace. You only need Jesus to have rest as your lifestyle. See, a lot of times, you know, we are hoping for death to solve all our problems. We are hoping for death to solve our you know, financial problems. We are hoping death to solve our health issues. We are hoping death to solve our sinful issues. You know, this is not going to move away. This is, I'm not going to change. This is not going to be healed. You know, this is not something that I am going to be victorious. So we are hoping that death will solve it. One day, one day when I go to heaven, it will all be solved. No, no, guys. What Jesus has for you is right now, in the here and now, when you believe in Jesus, you can rest in God. God right now. Rest is your portion in the here and now. It is not after, it is not something that you get after you pray for such a long period of time. It is something that you get right now. Right now, rest is your portion. Isn't that amazing, guys? Rest is your portion. So, what is rest? God is calling us into a rest. That is not an event. It is not limited for a specific time period. God is calling us into a rest, which is our lifestyle in the here and now at all times. God is calling us into a rest that is available for us at all times. Whether it's a Sunday, whether it's a Saturday, whether it's a Friday, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Are you in a fasting prayer? Not in a fasting prayer. Your fasting, feasting doesn't matter. But God has called you into a rest, which is a lifestyle in the here and now, in the here and now, right now, right now, God has, God has a rest for each one of you. Okay. Now, what does resting in God means? I'll give you the three points quickly, and then I'll try to explain each of them individually. Okay. The first point is resting in God is trust. That's the first point, trust. Second is identity of a son or a daughter. What's the first point? Trust. Second is identity of a son or a daughter. Third is pleasure. So the three points are trust, identity, pleasure. So when the author of Hebrews is writing Hebrews 4 verse 11, you know, he says, let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. He's actually talking about a story about an incident that happened in the book of Exodus. Okay, you remember the Israelites were under bondage in Egypt and how Moses rescues them and is taking them to the promised land. So just imagine with me that 
a whole nation of Israel is walking from Egypt to the promised land. Must be about more than a million people who are walking from Egypt to the promised land. They are walking through the desert. These guys were some these guys were a sect of people who saw miracles of God day after day. Right? They saw the pillar of cloud. They saw the pillar of fire. They saw water gushing out of, uh, out of the rock. They saw the Red Sea parting. They saw the enemies being defeated. They saw manna coming from heaven. They saw amazing miracles every day. But do you know in that generation of those 1 million people who leave Egypt, do you know how many people actually enter the promised land? Only two. Only two. And those two are Joshua and Caleb. Except Joshua and Caleb, nobody from that generation actually enters the promised land. And that is what the author of Hebrews is talking about. He's saying, let us therefore strive, meaning let us therefore make every effort to enter the rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. What is the disobedience that these 1 million people had that they could not enter the promised land? What was it? What, what did they disobey? God for what was the thing that they disobeyed that they were not allowed to enter God's rest that was meant for them the promised land was meant for them the land flowing with milk and honey was for them it was written as their inheritance that is what God had kept for them but they could not enter why because of disobedience now just to understand this turn with me to Hebrews chapter 3 verse 15 to 19, because that gives more context of what happened. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15 to 19. As it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Today. Okay, what did I say? Rest is not an event, futuristic event. Rest is a lifestyle for right now, today. So it says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. They were unable to enter because of unbelief. See, the word of the Lord came to everyone in that generation, not just to Joshua and Caleb. The promise of entering God's rest came to everybody, but except Joshua and Caleb, nobody received God's promise. Why? Because they did not believe in what God said. They saw miracles. They saw the miracles every day, every night. Every moment they saw God working out. But they did not believe in what God said. God said, hey, this is your portion. This is your promised land. But they did not believe. And God considers unbelief as disobedience. In God's definition, when God has said something and when we don't believe in what he has said, he considers that as disobedience. And it was unbelief that stopped them from entering the promised land. It was unbelief that hardened their hearts when God spoke the promise over them. It was unbelief that stopped them from receiving what God had for them. See, the problem here is not with God, that God withheld something from them. God did not withheld anything from them. The inheritance was in their name. But because they did not believe in God's promise, they could not receive what God had for them. See, miracles, miracles, you can experience miracles one after the another. But if you still don't believe in the promise of God, you can miss out the rest that God has for you right now. And I want to encourage you today that God has a place of rest for you right now, right now. In the circumstances that you're going through, in the situations that you're in, in the atmosphere that you're living in, in the city that you are in, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, guys. Doesn't matter what your bank balance tells you, doesn't matter what your boss tells you, doesn't matter what people around tell you, what God has for you is right now. Right now, in the here and now, you can rest in God if you believe what he's speaking over you.
If you believe the promises that he's speaking over you, that's why the word says, today, if you hear his word, do not harden your hearts. See, faith, what faith does is it positions us to receive from him because God has blessed us with everything that he has. He has already given. Guys, I'm telling you, please don't pray for God to bless you more because God has already blessed you. Ephesians 1.3 says that you are blessed with every spiritual blessings in Christ. You are already blessed. So the question is not, oh, I don't have this blessing because God has not blessed me. That's not the question. The question is, are you positioned yourself? Have you positioned yourself to receive what God has already blessed you? And how you position yourself is to receive what you have heard in faith. When you receive what you have heard in faith, it takes you to a place of rest that God has for you. It takes you to your promised land. It takes you to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. Faith positions you to receive his promise. Faith positions you guys. That's why Paul tells Timothy like this, you know, he says, fight the good fight of faith. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Because this is not going to be easy, guys. Let me tell you, this is not going to be easy. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to have so many thoughts that is, bomb that is going to bombard you. So many negative thoughts that is going to tell you, you are not enough. How are you going to do this? You have to fend for yourself. You have to take care of yourself. You know, there's so many things that will stress you up. That's why you have to fight the good fight of faith that in spite of the circumstances that you are in, in spite of the situations that you're in, in spite of what you're feeling, what you're thinking, you continue to believe in the goodness of God. You continue to believe that God is good. No, man, I am not going to entertain this thought. I'm not going to entertain this emotion because my father is good. My father is good. He has promised. And if he has promised, it will happen. He is good. In spite of what I'm going through, in spite of what I feel, I am going to choose to believe that my father is good. See, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God without faith. Faith does not just mean that you believe that God exists. Faith means that you believe that God exists and also believe that he is good. See, even demons believe that God exists. Even the devil believes that God exists, but the devil and demons don't have faith. How it, different, how it differentiates from us is that when we believe that God exists, we believe that he is good. He is good. He is extremely good. So I want to challenge you guys. What are the circumstances that you are going through? Where are you right now? Have you positioned yourself? Have you positioned yourself to enter God's rest? By believing that God is good. By believing that he's extremely loving. He's extremely faithful. Amen. So when we fight the good fight of faith, the result of fighting that good fight of faith is that we enter into God's rest. We enter into God's rest. So God's rest is not an event, but a lifestyle of trusting in him. Trusting that he is good at all times. Trusting that he is good at all times. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, doesn't matter. If you can trust God at all times, God's rest is made available for you. You can enter into, into his rest. You know, I love this verse in Psalms 23. It begins like this. Just to add context, I'll read from the beginning. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Why do we rest? Why do we sleep in the night? Because we want to recuperate. We want to feel fresh up, right? We want to feel refreshed. We want to, uh, how do we say this? We, we, we want to start fresh, start new again. And the psalmist over here says, David says, it is God who restores my soul. When you enter God's rest, no amount of sleeping can give you that refreshment what God can give you. And I'm telling you guys, if you are struggling to sleep tonight, if you're struggling with sleep disorder, let me tell you, enter into God's rest who can restore your soul, who can freshen you up like nothing. 
he can restore you god refreshes us and restores us god can become our rest amen so that's the first point that god's rest simply means to trust in him trust in him at all times and it takes a certain amount of violent faith you know we have to fight our way through because every morning that we wake up there's so many thought that is bombarding us you have to you have to just stand firm on god's promises and believe that he is good he is exceedingly good that's the first point what's the second point identity now to understand identity you need to understand that when god redeemed the people of israel from uh, egypt and when he was taking them to the promised land he gave them you know the 10 commandments and one of the commandment was to remember the sabbath day do you remember remember the sabbath day now it was not only the seventh day that they were you know they were supposed to set aside for god also the seventh year the seventh year was supposed to be a rest year for the lord as in the seventh year they were not allowed to work they were not allowed to you know sow or harvest they were they were asked by god to leave the you know to leave to leave the land empty they were not allowed allowed to sow nor to reap why because they were expected to rest in god so sabbath see sabbath was to the lord was because sabbath was reflecting that god we trust you so i don't have to work 7 days i can work 6 days the 7th day i when i give it to you i know that you will take care of me that is what sabbath meant see when adam and eve sinned by eating from the knowledge of good and evil what happened was they were cursed by saying that they sh- un- unless what was the curse the curse was it is by the sweat of their brow they shall eat so they had to sweat they had to stress unless they did not stress they will not eat but in god you know god gives us a blessing that goes against the curse of adam god wants you to rest so that even in rest you can be fed so sabbath was working against the curse that adam received that it is by stress it is by my hard work it is my my effort that i will eat but god is like when you rest in me i'll provide for you you can do much more in the 6 days that i give you than what you can do in the 7 days that you work hard workingly then when you're stressed out so sabbath was meant for us to take a special day out so that we can we can tell god god we trust in you i'm not going to work on this day because i just want to show that i trust in you and similarly the 7th year was also a year of sabbath they wouldn't so they would not reap but they would trust in god that god will provide just think about it such a radical faith that they would not work at all on the 7th year but they would trust god so in deuteronomy 5 you know god says something like this when he's talking about the sabbath he says remember that you were a slave in the land of egypt remember that you were a slave and the lord your god brought you out from there with a mighty hand and outstretched arm so understand this why was god asking them to take sabbath why was god asking them to rest because god was reminding them remember you were a slave then and you could not rest remember how i delivered you now because you are free now you because you no longer a slave you can rest you can take a day off and rest So guys when you rest in God you are basically saying that I'm not a slave I'm not a slave I am redeemed by God God takes care of me I am the child of God I am a son and a daughter So resting in the Lord reflects the condition of our heart do we trust in him do we trust in him that he will provide for us You know Jesus says in Matthew 6 he says if your earthly father gives you good things when you ask of him how much more will your heavenly father give you so when you rest in when you rest in god you're basically saying god i am not a slave i am not i'm not under the curse of adam that by my stress by the sweat of my brow i should eat 
but I am a child of God that has been redeemed from the Adamic curse, that has been redeemed from stress. And I'm a child of God that can trust in who you are. I'm a child of God that can trust in your provision, that you are my provision. Psalms 127 verse 2, the psalmist says like this, It is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Some of you really need to hear this. It is vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. You know, there are so many times in our lives where we feel that God will only provide when I'm stressed out. God will only provide when I wake up in the morning early and I work throughout the day and I sleep late in the night. That is only when God will provide me. But God says he gives to his beloved sleep. Even when you're sleeping, he gives you. When you rest in God, God gives you, God provides for you. Guys, I want to tell you, stress is not your portion. Don't entertain stress because stress is not your portion. If you are the child of God, if you are redeemed by God, you are no longer a slave who needs to toil. You are a son, you are a daughter, you are the child of God that can rest in God and he will provide for you. Let him become your source of provision. See, as long as you are going to try to become the source of your provision, you're going to be stressful. But the moment you trust in God, let him be the source of your provision. You can rest in him. That's why the author says in Hebrews 4 verse 11, do whatever it takes. Fight the good fight of faith. Do whatever it takes to enter God's rest. Believe in him, God. Believe in him. Believe in him today that he is good. Believe in God that he is extremely good. You are no longer under the curse of Adam, guys. You no longer have to be stressed out. You have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You have been made set free. So knowing that you're a child of God, rest in him. Rest is your lifestyle right now. What is the third point? third point that I said was pleasure. Okay, let's quickly revise. The first one was trust. Second one, identity. Third one, pleasure. Pleasure. So when we read Genesis chapter 2, it says that God rested on the seventh day. And even when God was telling the Israelites to rest on the seventh day, they were following the same pattern that God did when he rested on the seventh day. Right? Now, why did God rest? Six days he took to create the entire cosmos. In six days he completed his work. His work was perfect. His work was finished. And on the seventh day he rested. Why did God rest? Did God rest because he was tired? Did God rest because he needed a break? Did God rest because, you know, he got bored? God rested because he wanted to take pleasure. Say with me, pleasure. God rested because he wanted to pause and take pleasure in what he has created. See, every day when God was creating, every day after the creation, God would look at what he has created and he said, it is good. When he created you and me, he said, wow, it's excellent. This is awesome. It's pretty good. So when on the seventh day God rested, he wasn't tired. He rested because he wanted to pause and he just wanted to enjoy what he has created. And similarly, God has created us for pleasure. When God created Adam and Eve, he put them in the Garden of Eden. Do you know what is the meaning of Eden? Eden means pleasure. See, the world is running after pleasure. The world is going to, you know, nightclubs, going to going through multiple relationships, you know, going through all sort of things just to have pleasure. But what they have is not even a first copy of pleasure. God is the God of pleasure and he wants you to enjoy pleasure. He created you for pleasure. So when we rest in God, 
we are resting in god so that we can enjoy him we can delight in him we can take pleasure from him that is what it means to enjoy him so if you are praying today if you wake up in the morning and you pray for 2 hours but you did not take pleasure you were not able to enjoy that time of prayer that was not resting in god if you were bored then i am telling you god was equally bored because god is god of pleasure he loves taking pleasure he loves enjoying time with you he loves it guys so involve god in every little thing that you do in everything you know if if doing something gives you really pleasure involve god in it because god loves it when his people are having pleasure that's what paul says in first thessalonians 5 he says rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice how can we rejoice especially when the circumstances are so bad how can we do that is when you and me can take pleasure from god when you and me can enjoy from god see let me ask you something when joseph was sold in slavery by his own brothers and from slavery he is sold into the marketplace where he is bought by potiphar potiphar brings him to his house and potiphar's wife accuses him of adultery and then joseph goes into the prison if you see that entire life span of joseph he did not really go through good times but the bible records that the favor of the lord was upon him that joseph was successful in everything that he did how was joseph successful his bank balance was not increasing his lifestyle was not improving how was he successful because it says he was successful because the lord was with him see we have to redefine what pleasure is for us just like joseph redefined favor abraham redefined inheritance we have to redefine what pleasure is our pleasure is not in the things that we you know we do to entertain ourselves our pleasure comes from delighting in god that's why the psalmist says i delight in you i delight in you i desire you i take pleasure from you i enjoy your presence i'm telling you guys god loves it when you enjoy his presence and there is absolutely nothing that is more enjoyable than the presence of god no amount of alcohol no amount of porn no amount of sexual relationships can give you the pleasure that comes from the presence of god that's why the psalmist says it is better to it is better to live in the house of god one day than to live thousand days elsewhere because the pleasure of god the pleasure that comes from god from delighting in him is far more superior than anything that that anything that the world can give god wants you to enjoy wants you to take pleasure amen so what are the three things the first thing is trust god wants you to rest in him trusting that he is good at all times in every circumstances he is good at all times the second thing is identity when you trust in him you're basically operating from the identity not of a slave but of a son and of a daughter you're not saying that you know i'm still a slave to adam's sin i'm still a slave to that adam's curse but you're saying that i am operating as a child of god i'm resting in god because i trust in his provision he is the source of my provision and i trust in him the third one is we take pleasure from god we enjoy his presence because he becomes our everything we define pleasure by his presence by delighting in who god is amen let me remind you by saying this guys rest is not an event rest is not a retirement plan don't wait to rest after you have worked 50 years and when you will retire please don't wait for to do that or don't wait for you to die to finally rest in peace but if you believe in the father if you believe in the father who says hey you are my son you are my daughter in whom in you i am well pleased if you can believe in him my goodness you can enter into his rest 
right now at this very moment rest in god is a lifestyle that he has for us right now you can rest in him everything that god has done is a done deal he has done see when jesus died on the cross he said it is finished he was not joking he did not say it will be finished 2000 years from now he said it is finished it was done it's a done deal so you have to trust what jesus said that it's a done deal your provision is taken care of your life is taken care of your emotions are taken care of your relationships are taken care of anything that you're struggling with is taken care of you have to trust god you have to trust his word trust in what jesus has done for you trust in him walk in the identity that god has for you don't walk like a slave don't try to stress yourself up and see say that i have to do this on my own don't when god has a stress free life for you take pleasure enjoy enjoy what god has blessed you with take pleasure he loves it he loves it guys he loves it when you trust in him there's a verse in psalms which says god is not impressed by the strength of horses he is not impressed by the strength of a warrior he is impressed when his children trust in him impresses him it impresses him when you absolutely trust in him trust guys that he is good he is extremely good enter into his rest don't strive don't 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 try to work this out by yourself but enter into his rest believe today that he is good he is for you he is with you at all times he is in you even when we are unfaithful even when we are bad even when we are sinful he is still good because he can't change his nature he is loving he is faithful enter into his rest don't wait for an event don't wait for sunday enter into his rest that is always made available for you and me it's a lifestyle may god bless you guys let's pray father we receive your rest in faith come on I want you all to pray with me father we receive your rest in faith believing and knowing that you are good you are good at all times if our earthly parents could provide for us good things how much more how much more how much more will you shower us with good and perfect things father we take ha <laughs> Father we just stand on your promises believing and knowing that you are good you are good at all times in Jesus name we pray amen